I'm Rosie Bloor, co-host of The Intelligence. I'm Shailesh Shitnas, business writer. Today we're discussing AI in India. And to listen to the whole episode, you can click the link in the description below. So Shailesh, tell me, we're talking about AI growth in India. How fast is it growing? So AI is really booming in India. Uh, in fact, the country is now the second largest uh, market for ChatGPT by number of users and soon could be the first. And potentially what happens in India could actually impact a lot of other countries in terms of how AI gets used. So it's quite interesting. So presumably tech companies are pretty excited about this. American tech companies are all over India. There's just a whole host of offers that they have in terms of signing up users. So for example, um, ChatGPT, uh, the version of ChatGPT which is available in India is almost uh, a fifth of what it is in, in America, for instance. Um, Google has made its Gemini Pro free for a lot of all the students in India. But I think the most interesting kind of uh, offer, as you will, is essentially Perplexity, which is an AI, generative AI startup, uh, which is hoping to challenge Google. It has made its version uh, free to all subscribers of Airtel, which is a large mobile operator. And Airtel has around 360 million users. Wow. So why are US companies so interested in India and why now? So that's a good question. Uh, I think if you talk to the companies, uh, their perspective is um, India is a really big market in terms of usage. And some of the concerns that you see in, uh, for example, uh, other countries in the West, those concerns are not felt as deeply around privacy or the downsides of AI. People are embracing AI in a, in a lot more uh, kind of open ways and, and trying out different things. So that's that's number one. But I think if you start to look deeper, there are other reasons as well. Uh, first and foremost, I think, is uh, being in India, it gives them access to a really large user base and to be able to actually run these products at scale. And I think that is really, really important and very interesting to them. Uh, the second thing is the way AI is getting used is also very different fr from, from America, for example. So one of the things that a lot of um, these companies will tell you is they've been surprised at how quickly voice-based interactions have taken off in India uh, as opposed to in America. So that's, again, interesting. And the third thing, which I don't think a lot of them will tell you, but I think is really real, is data itself. So obviously with AI, a lot of it depends on data. Uh, the more data you have, the better your models get, the more you can tune it, and so on and so forth. So it's quite a virtuous cycle. And with so many users actually using data, you're, you're generating a lot of real-world data, which you can't really get from other places because essentially public data has been mined. And that, I think, is a really big draw as well. But if they're offering their services free or very cheap, isn't it hard for them to make money? I think this gets back to kind of um, questions around is Silicon Valley using its old blitzscaling playbook here? And um, yes, I mean, there are certain ways where this particular wave is different from the past. So for example, in the previous waves of cloud computing, the essential cost of adding a new user was marginally zero. It was, it was kind of the same platform. That's not the case with AI so far. Inferencing costs are real. Every time you ask a question and it generates a response, it is burning up real power. It is using real energy. And so the costs are real. And companies are very tight-lipped about their expenses for obvious reasons, but it's it's obviously true that kind of they are definitely not making money in India uh, right now. But their hope is, of course, that over time inference costs come down. They can have different monetization strategies that are like subscriptions, advertising, so on and so forth. But I don't think anybody's thinking about it right now. It's more about grabbing as many users as you can. Shailesh, with such a big market and, of course, so many skilled developers, why isn't India developing its own AI firms to rival these? So that's a really good question, and that's a really big debate that's happening in India right now, particularly as OpenAI, Google, Meta, uh, their models are really popular in India. And so the question is, should India invest or have its own foundational model? And that's a question many people are asking. Uh, the government has taken some attempts at kind of financing or, or uh, pushing uh, for a local model. But I think uh, the interesting thing for India is not so much on the models or the chips or the AI stack, which I think is really going to be really hard to, uh, to replicate. Um, the country does have a potential in terms of how AI gets used, particularly in the application side. So yes, you have the hardware, you have the models that are dominated by American tech firms, but there is an opportunity to actually uh, build on the application layer in terms of how the end user is actually interacting with AI. And that, I think, could be a more interesting place for a lot of Indian companies. So obviously you spend a lot of time thinking about AI. What would your prediction be about how U.S. investment in India shakes out? So I think it's definitely here to stay. It's not a, it's not a flash in the pan. The companies are really serious about their investments. They're, it's not just these offers. They're actually building physical data centers. Um, Microsoft, Google, Meta, they're, 
building physical uh, data centers in India. So they are really serious about their investment here. And I think it's here to stay. Um, and uh, I think the good thing is the ecosystem is fairly open in the sense that big tech companies as well as local startups kind of play in the same space. So I think it's really going to be interesting to watch over the next four years how that evolves, uh, particularly as, this, uh, as the action shifts more towards use of AI rather than just the models themselves. Shalesh, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for having me. Thank <laughs> you.